pleased to be joined now, as we are every week at this time, by NFL Film Senior Producer and co-host of ESPN's NFL Matchup Show, one Greg Cosell joining us. His weekly segment presented by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Greg, looking good in that Bills red there. Nicely done. Hey, I appreciate it, guys, man. I, I got it yesterday. I said I'm wearing it today for the show without question. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. You look good in it. That bright red. <laughs> there you go. It's a there strong you go. Hey, color. You got to look good in something, Steve. You know, that, I don't know what yeah. that is. But that is a thanks. run game. That's a run game color, baby. Oh, that, <laughs> right there. Is that what you're expecting That's this what, week, yes. Steve? There if you Case go. Keenum is, in fact, <laughs> maybe, the starter? Maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe. Why don't, why don't we begin with, you know, the Bills, Greg. You know what Josh Allen's skill set is. Obviously, we know, we know if Case Keenum has to start on Sunday that – while the play calls are all going to be the same in terms of terminology, what Ken Dorsey is going to be calling for Case Keenum figures to be in stark contrast to that of Josh Allen, right? I would say to some degree. I mean, Brownie, there is a lot of quick game rhythm throws in the Bills' offense. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, Keenum can do that without question. Most quarterbacks can. Um, you know, obviously there's certain things that they would not call and there are certain plays – that Josh Allen will make that obviously very few guys in the league can make. So certainly Keenum cannot make them, but a couple of, couple of thoughts, you know, Keenum's played in this league and he's been efficient. You know, he had that season when they lost to the Eagles in the uh, NFC championship game, the year the Eagles won the Super Bowl, where he was pretty much the starter and played well. Um, he's not immobile. He's not a statue. He just obviously, again, I'm not saying anything profound, doesn't have the skill set of, of Josh, um, few do, if any, but I think in terms of calling a game, uh, I'm really curious to see what they do, uh, as, as I'm sure you guys are, if in fact, you know, Case Keenum would be the starter. Uh, it, you know, I guess the big question would be, would they perhaps increase the run game volume? I don't know the answer to that. Um, we'll see, but I don't think they would dramatically change. Like, they're not going to change the, the concepts in the pass game. It's just a matter of what you call. Is it is there enough in, in the passing game of the Bills, say, for instance, Greg, you would call the exact same play for Case Keenum, but he would just have the ability to make different choices within that concept. Yep. He would take the check down. He would take the underneath stuff. He would look the safeties off for the deep route. They'd have to honor it because they got guys running out there, and he could just take an easier throw. Is there some of that that's going to go on, or is that oh, sure, predominantly sure. what they what they would do? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Josh being an you know an aggressive thrower and capable of of big time throws down the field, Keenum's not capable of that. But like you said, Steve, it doesn't mean you can't call the same routes because you know unless you're calling you know a true shot play where there's just let's say two vertical type routes most of the time you're going to have a shorter throw involved in a route concept. So you can call some of the same things. Um, you know, I think, I think it's because Josh is so physically gifted and can obviously throw the ball deep down the field. I mean, that throw he made after the injury, you know, that may have been the best throw of the season. It was just yeah. happened to be incomplete, you yeah. know? Um, but, uh, uh, you know, obviously Case Keenum can't do that. But I still think you can run, you know, kind of an efficient passing game, which is kind of what the, the Bills have evolved and morphed into for the most part anyway. Let's uh, talk a little bit about that Vikings defense that the Bills offense will be yeah. facing. Um, pretty good in terms of pressure rate, only rushing four. That's not to say they yes. won't blitz occasionally. But Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter, I think – Daniil Hunter is finally getting a feel for their new 3-4 front. Um, and Zadarius Smith is wholly familiar with that. But last three games, Greg, these guys have combined for eight sacks and 16 quarterback hits. And if you watch last week's game against Washington, I mean, they were collapsing the pocket with alarming yeah. regularity. Well, this is Ed Donatel. And Ed Donatel is from the Vic Fangio school. So you're seeing a lot of split safety coverage. You see four man pressures uh, and they have really good length up front. You mentioned two. I would add DJ Wanham to that mix. He's another long athletic pass rusher. And as you know, they move people around quite a bit. So 
you end up with Zadarius Smith lining up as a stand-up zero technique, head up over the center. You see him lining up over guards. You see the same with, with Hunter at times. You see the same with Wanham. Even Patrick Jones, the second-year player from the University of Pittsburgh, will do that at times. And they've got two veteran linebackers in Hicks and Kendricks who are very smart, savvy players. Um, and then they've got Harrison Smith, another veteran safety Um so, you know, this is a this is a defense with good people. You'd call it more of an execution defense than than a highly schemed defense. Although, as I said, they do have multiple front alignments. That's probably where the scheming comes into play more. But they're not a high percentage pressure defense in terms of sending five or six rushers. And they do. When they go into the secondary, they've got uh... – Cameron Danzler and Maynard Patrick Clay. Peterson. And they've got some guys back there. So, uh, certainly, Peterson is a little bit past his prime, but still an elite athlete, uh, or at least was at one point. How does yep. their secondary complement their front? Well, if you're going to play a lot of, of zone, which they play more zone than man, although it's not a static zone because it's from the Vic Fangio school where – you know, what you see pre-snap is not often what you get after the snap. So I don't want to make it seem like, hey, they just line up in basic zone and it's easy. Um, but I think when you play the way they do, you're relying on your pass rush. And they've been able to get pass rush with four. That's the critical piece because it's a numbers game. If you can rush with four, you have seven in coverage. And you can do a lot of things on your back end with sort of hybrid zone man looks, matchup principles. As you know, Steve, you can do a lot of things with seven. You start having to rush five, then you have six. And it, it changes the numbers dynamic. Um, but all this is a numbers game. If they, you can play coverage with seven, you really have a lot of options. And they've been mostly able to do that. Flipping it around to their offense, you know, Kirk Cousins has been efficient, if not spectacular. Um, I'm, I'm interested in some of the numbers that have come out of his play this year. Chief among them, all six of his interceptions coming on downfield throws. Right. I realize that he's very much a by-the-book quarterback. You know, whatever the play is, he's going to execute the play with very little improvisation seems like the only guy he gives extra chances to are Jeffers, is Jefferson, and with good reason. But he gets victimized last week on a downfield throw into the end zone, corner route to Jefferson, kind of puts up a 50-50 ball, and it gets picked. What do, we, do we pull anything away from that? Is there enough of a sample size with six picks all on downfield throws with him? Um, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what that means, Brownie. Um, you know, I think you you nailed it, though, in describing what he is. Um, I, I think this is an offense that's still trying to get its sea legs with the new uh, head coach, Kevin O'Connell. And obviously he put in a new scheme. Uh, you know, a year ago, the Vikings were one of the heaviest percentage wise team that played with a fullback. Now they are among the league leaders in 11 personnel because that's where Kevin O'Connell's background is with the Rams. So this is an 11 personnel offense. Um I have to tell you, I think one of the most overlooked trades at the trading deadline was TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. Because I think TJ Hawkinson, from a talent standpoint, is a top three or four tight end in this league. And I remember doing him coming out of Iowa, and I I did not have anything typed in my weakness column. You know, I think this guy is a really good player. For whatever reason, it didn't work out in Detroit in terms of volume targets, but he comes in last week, has nine targets and nine catches. And I think he's going to become their number two target receiver behind Jefferson. He's really gifted. He's a really good athlete. And he's a really good inline blocker as well. And we know that the, the offense primarily starts with Dalvin Cook in the run game. Right. And if this Viking offense, I mean, we, we've talked about Kirk Cousins, about how he's a little bit of a – and this is why he's been successful too – he understands the offense and runs yep. it, and it's always designed to be successful. And the guy, he rarely goes off script. And even in the touchdown he had last week, he went to his third option in the back of the end zone, looked right, looked back left, yep. and came and caught the tight end across the middle. Just uh, almost robotic in his ability to hang in there, go through his progressions, and then make the, the right read. How does this offense in its, in its balance of run-pass play into his ability just to stay within the lines? 
Yeah, I mean, he's the kind of quarterback now, Steve, as you know, that a lot of people say is kind of becoming a little bit of a dinosaur in the league, right. that he's not the guy you want, you know, let's say, if you're drafting a quarterback, because he's he's your pure executor and ball distributor. That's exactly right. what Kirk Cousins is. You know, the offense has to work. He knows where to go with the ball. He'll stand and deliver. Um, as you said, he's not really going to make second reaction plays. He does that once in a great while, but that's not his game. Um, so he's kind of, you know, an old school executor and ball distributor, but they have a lot of weapons. Um, and, you know, the key obviously is pressure. Uh, if you can get pressure on him, uh, then you can obviously make him play a little faster. And, you know, quarterbacks that are pocket players, you know, they don't want to play that way, obviously. Um, he doesn't necessarily move within the pocket grade either. He's kind of a guy that that it just he sees it. He reads it. He knows where to go with the ball. He's he's your classic case of he throws it to the right receiver at the right time with the right kind of throw. That's exactly what Kirk Cousins is. All right. So now Justin Jefferson obviously is, you know, concern number one in the passing game yep. for the Bills defense. How have most of the opponents played him? Have they gone bracket coverage with him and then just worry about everybody else in matchup ways? Or has it been a mixed bag through the course of the first eight games? Is there a, is there a blueprint for no. Jefferson, I guess, is what I'm asking? No, and there's never a blueprint for great players, you know, because otherwise everybody would do the same thing and they'd stop him. So, you know, I'm not, I've never been Brownie a, bl a blueprint guy because there's always games where great players get shut down and people think that, oh, that's what you have to do every single week. And it never quite works that way. Um, he lines up both inside and outside. They move him around. Are there times people bracket him? Absolutely. Are there times they double him? Sure. But they move him around as we're seeing right here. You know, it, it, it's not that easy just to say, we're going to do this on every play. Plus, you know, they have a pretty multiple offense in terms of their concepts. So there's other good players. You know, Thielen is not exactly what he was three or four years ago, but he's a pretty good player. And now, and by the way, the, the their third receiver, Osborne, um, you guys may remember him because he started at the University of Buffalo before his last year at, at the University of Miami. He's a pretty good receiver, too. He's a really good three. He, his target share will probably drop because of Hawkinson, but he is not a bad receiver at all. And now you add Hawkinson to the mix, Brownie. There's not – you can't just say, okay, let's just take away Jefferson and we shut everybody down. Let's talk about the, the guys up front, the Buffalo Bills. They're going to go in. Rousseau is probably is out, has been ruled out yep. of this game. you you got Von Miller, and it's going to be either Shaq Lawson or A.J. Epinesa, one of those uh, the usual suspects. Uh, you know, kind of match up, do a matchup analysis of their offensive line against the pass rush of the Bills. I like their O line. I think it's a young group that's only going to ascend. Um, when Darasaw came out last year, I thought he was one of the best left tackle prospects in the draft. In fact, I didn't think there was a significant difference between him and Penny Sewell. So, you know, I, and I think he's played well based on my tape. Um, it's a young group. They start the rookie from LSU, another player I really like this year um, on tape, uh, Ed Ingram. He's had his ups and downs for sure, but I think he's going to be a good player. Um, Cleveland is a young player as well. He's the other guard. Um, and then they got O'Neal at tackle, the right tackle, and he's a solid veteran. I think the weak link is at center. Um, I don't think he's a really good player. You know, I, I wouldn't say he's, he's a stiff, but I think that's the weak link. Um, but I think this is an O-line that is getting better and better, Steve, and I think, I think it's a pretty solid group. What do we – I mean, what do we make of the Vikings' ability to win six consecutive – one score games. I mean, it just seems yeah. like they're getting the plays when they absolutely have to have them. But then you watch some of these games, Greg, and it's like, well, where the heck was that the first three quarters? Um, right, right. Like, I mean, the Washington game's a perfect example. You know, they come out for the first drive, march right down the field, touchdown, then they punt the ball like the next five times in a row and then rally at the end of the game. Can you put your finger on what it is, because there seem to be these long lulls in play from them, and it's like, oh, all right, let's finish the game, and then they do. Uh, the short answer to your question would be no. I can't put my finger on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if I tried to, I'd be lying. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I really don't know the answer to that, other than the fact that I think that they're still, as I said earlier, still working through having a feel for Kevin O'Connell's offense. And when you're working through a new offense, 
the tendency is you have stretches where the execution just isn't there. And also, the one thing I would say, I don't think their run game has been quite as consistent as they would like. I think Dalvin Cook is a terrific back, but with the exception of a few runs, it's it's it hasn't quite been, I think, what they want from a sustaining basis. You know, that's the thing. You know, when Cook is, is going well, sure, is he capable of breaking a 60-yard touchdown? Absolutely. But I think when he's going well, he's such a high-velocity runner that he gets seven, eight yards, and that changes the whole dynamic of your offense when it's second and two versus second and nine. Yeah, it seems as though, and I'm with you, the numbers, they look like they can run it pretty well. And even in, when you look at Dalvin Cook, 131 carries, 608 yards, but it's a little spotty, you know, a little bit yeah. of a roller coaster. Sometimes it looks like really like bland. And then other times, like he snapped off a big run this last week. So uh, you're, yeah. it, it's, it's feast or famine, I guess, is a better way to describe it. Yeah, but he's a really, really good back. I mean, you know, he's, he's, I've always used the term with him, velocity. He's a velocity runner. You know, it's predominantly zone. And when he can see, so, when he can see the, the, the crack or the hole at the first level, he gets through that in a hurry with speed. And he's, he's kind of physical, even though he's not a big, big man. He's not small. He's probably 210. So he's not tiny, but, you know, he runs hard. Uh, and, and he's a tough guy to bring down because of that speed and velocity. All right, so, Greg, um, just kind of looking at the, the division race, the conference race here in the AFC, it is tightly packed, as you yep. know. Um, the Bills, you know, you say, oh, it's an NFC opponent. You know, if you can't have Josh this week, it's not catastrophic if you lose it because it's not a conference loss per se. Um, but this, this thing's getting tight here. I, I'm kind of anticipating a little bit of topsy-turviness over the next few weeks because it is so tightly packed. One loss, one win. I mean, for example, if the Bills can't pull this game out this week and, and the Jets or Miami win, Buffalo goes from the one seed to the five seed in a hurry. Yeah, I know. I mean, last week's loss was a tough one for that reason. Um, you know, there's a lot of football to be played. Obviously, the big question is, Josh, they'll keep it close to the vest. Um, you know, it, it is the kind of injury where it, it, it can be a long-term injury too. So you, we just don't know at this point, you know, and, and, and look, you're in the building, but you know how, how um, Sean is. He's, he's not the kind of guy that just uh, is overly transparent about this kind of stuff. So we really don't know. Um, but, you know, we hope if he does miss this week that it's one game and he can come back the next week. But you're right about that, Brownie. I mean, you know, it's the AFC is very, very good. There's, there's a lot of teams that can beat you in any given week. And we saw that with the Bills and the Jets. Yeah, and, and we've been talking about it all week, about there's nine teams that have five wins or more, and nobody's got more yeah. than six. Yeah, in the AFC. In the AFC. So it's it's a horse race, and there's it's going to be hard. It's going to come down, I think, for the first time in a long time, it looks like it's going to come down to a number of tiebreakers. They may have to go deeper than they've gone in recent, in recent memory to get that last seven, five, six, seven seed. Yeah, I'll leave that to the people that know that stuff. It's funny, Steve, when we get to the end of the year and people ask me about that stuff, I just say, I just wait till they tell me. I, I never try to figure yeah. that stuff out. <laughs> well, and the problem is we've got two teams in the AFC that, got a, that have a tie. And that, right. is, that is, oh, my gosh, that is a, an absolute wrench in the works. Last thing real quick, Greg, that I wanted to mention that I forgot to ask you about. Uh, the Minnesota defense, last in the league in red zone touchdown efficiency. They're giving up touchdowns in their red zone at almost 80% clip. Now, they've allowed the fewest red zone possessions to their right. opponent in the league, so they're not getting down there often. But when they do, they're giving up yardage, and, I mean, they're allowing teams to run down there at a rate of 3.78 yards per carry. That's a full yard over the league average. Uh, they probably are not going to have Dalvin Tomlinson again this week, who's got a calf injury. Um, I guess whether it's whether it's Keenum or whether it's Allen, can the Bills make some hay down there if they can get inside well, the 20? They've struggled, the Bills, with their red zone offense for right. basically two years now. So, um, you know, and they're not a team that normally lines up and tries to bang it in, you know, it's you know, when they get into the red zone. So, I'd be. It brings us back to our initial thoughts here about what are the Bills? What's the Bills' offense going to look like if it's Case Keenum? 
Is there going to be more volume in the run game? Are they going to try to play that way, knowing that, hey, maybe they can't put up 30 this week against a really solid defense overall? You know, is this the kind of game that you have to play a little more old school, Brownie? You know, try to, I don't want to say, you know, eat clock, but I mean, you know, try to have a more balanced offense. Um, you know, James Cook seemingly has been getting a few more snaps, you know, in recent weeks. Is right. is this a week where he gets, you know, a few more snaps in the run game? You know, because he does bring more explosiveness to the table than Singletary. Right, and it's also we're uh, now that he's been acclimated. Naheem Hines may be an a- option as well. Both Correct. those guys, both those guys have breakaway speed, and that changes yep. the equation. Certainly, they're more explosive than Singletary, uh, and we've seen it right from the get go when Naheem Hines showed up. That guy can run routes like a champ. Oh, no, he's, he's so a really. I mean, they've got two backs who are really good receivers now, in Hines and Cook. Right, so maybe uh, in with a quarterback that has the skill set of case keenum maybe you take that out of the maybe you take that offensive or that aspect of your offense out of the wrapper and use it yep i mean you know my sense is with case there's probably a little more scheming involved in the sense that you're going to try to define reads and throws for him whereas with josh not that you don't want to do that but you kind of know that he can make some throws that others can't right all right, Greg, thanks for uh, thanks, chopping Greg. it up with us. We appreciate it. We'll catch up with you next week. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thanks so much. You too. You look All good right. in that sweatshirt. <laughs> 